Hi everyone, it's John. After three weeks absence, we've come to another Tuesday, and I have managed to muster for you yet another book review. This week I want to talk about uh, something that's maybe a little bit more contemporary than I usually discuss. It is a book called Brazabelle Beach by William Boyd, a novel. This, I'm, I'm having a really hard time remembering where exactly I heard about, about Roswell Beach. I want to say I came across it in a list of best of novels, maybe best of English language fiction after 1950 or something like that. Obviously not best fiction of all time. But I think it might have been long listed for a booker. Or something back when it came out and it came out I want to say in 1992 when its author William Boyd was fairly young I want to say he was in his late 30s um, and I'd, I'd never heard of William Boyd but I'd heard of the novel and remember seeing the name so I picked it up when I saw it for only a few dollars at a local half price books and decided to finally read it. So, as far as the novel goes, it is about one character's decision to sort of escape her unsuccessful, surreally unsuccessful marriage to a, uh, I guess, an obsessive compulsive mathematician on who is on the verge of a mental breakdown. This character's name is Hope Clearwater, a one more grown-worthy name to adorn the annals of contemporary Anglophone fiction, and uh, one of the many ways in which William Boyd uses all the subtlety of a jackhammer to drive home his point with, with symbols. Uh, Hope Clearwater escapes to Africa after having lived in, lived in London with her husband. She finds herself at the Grosso Arvore Research Project, which uh, would basically mean Big Tree. Big Tree Research Project, uh, located in an unnamed country, we might guess by the loc or by the name of the novel Brazzaville Beach that it might be the Congo, Brazzaville being the capital of the Congo, but that's not ever said in the book, I don't think. It's in uh, some unnamed country in coastal West Africa that's been riven by political strife and civil war. The leader of the project is this megalomaniac by the name of Eugene Malabar, who is leading up Grosso Arvore, and he has spent his entire career trying to establish that chimpanzees exhibit basically peaceful behavior, cooperative behavior with one another and he's gone so far as to write up these ideas in a series of scholarly articles but also a mainstream book what he considers to be his magnum opus called the peaceful primate really to summarize his ideas and to pass them along to the public so you know future generations can get hold of them but his his his, his professional and in, to many extents, his personal life, since he lives on this, you know, I, this in this country doing this research project, his personal and political and and professional lives are sort of tied up, and he has everything writing on this thesis that chimpanzees are essentially peaceful. He displays many of the characteristics of a sort of Weberian charismatic leader. Uh, many of the research group assistants treat him with fawning obeisance. They don't really question what he has to say or question where he gets his information or or what he sees when he goes out to, to, to do field work. He just writes his books and, uh, you know, doesn't really suffer the perils of, of peer research because no one is really uh, has has the courage to question him on his conclusions. There's one big glaring problem though 
with his books and with his ideas, and it's that absolutely everything that Hope does, Hope Clearwater does, when she looks at the chimps, leads her to the exact opposite conclusion about their behavior. In fact, there's a one small breakaway group that Hope observes, which everyone calls the Southern Faction. Originally, the Southern Faction and the Northern Faction of these chimpanzees, of these chimpanzees were one group, and one broke away from the other, and they started to occupy the, the, the northern part of the island, the northern faction. And the other one stayed in the south. And she is examining the southern group. And she notices that members of the chimpanzees in the southern group are being actively targeted and murdered, viciously murdered, by members of the northern faction. And not only do they murder, they, they, like I said, they do so cruelly and maliciously and pretty much indiscriminately, uh, even attacking the youngest members of, the, of their rival group. And if you've ever seen uh, chimpanzees in the wild, when they go at one another, I mean, they'll take, you know, a rival clan member or family member's babies and just beat its head against a rock until its brains, you know, um, are dripping out of its skull. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. But that, that sort of, you know, violent action is detailed a few times in the book. Um, she approaches Malabar about this, and she tells him what she has seen with her own eyes. And when he's confronted with the information, he basically refuses to believe her, and he, he attacks her and almost kills her. The narrative as, uh, of Hope as a primatologist is by far, I guess, one of the meatiest and most interesting parts of the novel. But it's interlaced with a lot of sub-narratives, uh, like her love affair with a man by the name of Usman uh, Shaukri, Usman Shaukri, who is an Egyptian mercenary and pilot flying planes during the ongoing Civil War, as well as uh, the intermittent flash flashbacks that she has with life with her ex-husband back in England, John the Mathematician. There's also one point towards the end of the novel where Hope, after fi finally abandoning the research for good, gets kidnapped by revolutionaries, uh, for one of whom she develops a bizarre Stockholm Syndrome-like affection. <laughs> Despite the uneven edges and narrative threads that can sometimes pull the reader of the novel in different directions without much what I would call value added, and it's decidedly at times off-putting orientalist choice of Africa as a place of mystery and wonder that Western readers are so used to, I feel like I sort of developed a, a soft spot for the cleverest part of the book, which is the part that I tried to stress in the summary, that is a sort of tacit assumption that hope and the rest of the primatologists were observing the chimpanzees when it was actually clear that both the, ch the researchers and the chimpanzees' behavior so heavily paralleled one another that it was unclear who was the real subject of investigation. Uh, how Boyd sort of used the narrative to slowly blur the distinctions between the members of the research group, the human beings, and the chimpanzees, both of whom had their own preoccupations, personal lives, lurid uh, sort of encounters with violence, Hope and Eugene getting into, you know, a violent spat, the chimpanzees becoming violent, this this was a something that he accomplished in the book, I thought, that was very, very smart. And I picked up on it early in the book, the fact that, you know, we, we think that we're going to be looking directly at these chimps. And I'm not saying that they're observing us like, you know, anthropologists or something. But, I mean, there's a distinct parallel in how 
how we act. We like to think of ourselves as peaceful and civilized, but as, as it turns out, so much of the novel uh, shows us how really neither one of us are. Um, really, really better than I was expecting it to be, and sort of has turned me on to the name of William Boyd as a novelist. If uh, he's he's got quite a a long list of of books, eh, not long, maybe maybe eight books or so that he's published since the uh, 80s, I want to say. But um, if you can find this for a few dollars, as I did, uh, this is William Boyd's novel, uh, Brazzaville Beach, a wonderful little uh, novel about uh, primate, uh, primate watchers living in an African reserve. You've heard about it or have any... I don't know what questions I might be able to answer. It's already been a couple of months since I've read it. But if you've read it and have any comments or know uh, anything else about other William Boyd works, uh, let me know. And I will talk to you, knock on wood, next Tuesday. Bye.